Next up is champion figure skater turned entrepreneur, Jenna McCorkle. I made a lot of sacrifice in my competitive career in order to get to where I wanted to be. But then when I wanted to channel that kind of energy and passion and drive into a business, I took the same approach. You know, I work day in, day out, seven days a week. Ooh. But going into the den is still a nerve-wracking experience, even for a former Olympian. I've been used to competing in stadiums full of 20,000 people watching me, millions of people on TV. I don't think that that's quite as scary as walking in in front of the dragons today. Oh. Oh. Roller skates. Whoa! <laughs> Come on, Tuka, you can do that. <laughs> Hello, Dragons. My name is Jenna McCorkle, and I am the founder of Chic Sport. I'm here today to ask for a £100,000 investment for 7.5% of my company. With over 20 years of experience in the figure skating industry, I discovered there was a gap in the market for figure skating clothing designed to meet the needs of a figure skater. I travelled the world, competed with all of our other athletes all over the world, and firsthand, I was able to experience some of the issues we incur while skating ourselves. One of those being, with the blades being very sharp, they cut away at the leggings at the bottom, around the ankle area. So I incorporated a cut-resistant panel into the leggings in order to minimise this issue. This quickly became one of our unique selling points. Chic Sport launched at the 2017 World Championships in Helsinki, Finland. And to date, we've sold over 30,000 products. We've had a combined turnover of 1.8 million, gross profit of 889,000, and net profit of 305,000. And this current year, we have done a turnover of 540, and net profit is 123,000. I really do believe that Chic Sport can be a global brand for figure skating, and I invite you to take a look in your boxes. And I'd like to say a huge thank you to Natasha Mackay, who's our current British champion, for coming and Model in the clothes for us today. Thank you. Thank you. A range of sportswear designed specifically for ice skaters is the offering from Jenna McCorkle. Could I have a look at the rail? Yeah, of course. Jenna is looking for £100,000 in exchange for a 7.5% share in her company. Anything here with nylon? Um, yeah, I think some of our products do have uh, nylon, but they're mostly mainly 100% polyester. Tuka Suleiman has got a feel for Jenna's choice of fabrics. Now, Sarah Davies wants to try this former figure skater's business out for size. Jenna. Hi, Hi. I'm Sarah. Hi. Uh, I've just had a quick look at them. They're really <laughs> innovative, the, the design and the fabric. And so was there just nobody doing this? When I was competing, like, there was no one. And it was actually during Vancouver Olympics that I was actually looking around me and I'm like, no one here, including myself, was actually wearing clothes that was designed for figure skating. So there is, yeah, there is other brands, um, but we are the largest brand uh, in figure skating at this moment. You are the biggest? Yes. That worries me. Because if you're the biggest brand doing a half a million turnover, yeah. the market can't be that big. Well, I, yeah, I understand your, your comment, but UK has less than 100 ice rinks, as opposed to Canada, 2,860 ice rinks, America, 1,760 ice rinks. We are, at this present moment in time, we're a very young business, and we've had approximately two years where we haven't been able to attend events, so we haven't been able to get out to those bigger countries. Jenna believes that a relatively untapped North American market offers plenty of room for further growth. But Deborah Meaden is keen to find out more about this ice skater turned entrepreneur's sporting pedigree. Did I hear you say you went to the Olympics? You skated in the Olympics? Twice for Great Britain, yeah. I was 11 times British champion and competed at 13 European and World Championships. Talk about being understated. There is a winner right there. Thank you. Um, but to go back to the uh, US and Canada, which I guess yep. is, is your golden goal right now, Absolutely, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. How, if you go to Canada and the US, how do you hit that market? 
My plan originally was, just before COVID, we were going to go to Skate America, Skate Canada Grand Prix. It's like a football match in the UK, do you know what I mean? Like they would attract thousands of people, but then obviously that got uh, cut off. So now we're looking at attending the Grand Prix this year. The goal would be to bring on an ambassador to promote the brand prior to us coming. So talk about the landscape okay. in the US, who's there? So there is a couple of other brands like in every sport. Do we know how big they are in terms of financials? Um, no, because uh, to be honest, I haven't really looked into it because it's totally, I'm 100% online and they're basically to the wholesalers. Um, no, I understand, but they yeah. are still selling yeah, to your absolutely. marketplace. Yeah, yeah. And what I'm trying to get is, can you give me any metrics that would give me an idea of financially how big that market is? Um, no, but the US, they have 180,000 competitive figure skaters yep. at this moment, whereas in the UK, that's approximately 10,000. Jenna's lack of knowledge on the size of her target market puts her on thin ice with Deborah Meaden. And Peter Jones is wondering if she should shift her focus away from the rinks. Is there any chance that you can shift this brand into, into other markets as opposed to ice skating? Um, Chic Sport is trademarked with a coexistence with another brand, which I am 100% restricted to figure skating in this brand with the with the word chic this is a shame i come up against these coexistence yeah issues all the time and is it a related business in any sense so it's kind of more like uh casual wear you know like it's not sports specific clothing it's more like work wear yeah. and that so uh, if you imagine now you didn't have that situation yes or that situation can be dealt with with a yes. good legal team yes. Yes. that yes. might worry the other brand yes <laughs> What would you do? Because at the moment, I completely agree with Tuka's opening statement. If you're yes, the biggest absolutely. in the world, you, you're kind of almost hitting yeah. the glass ceiling. So yeah. Where else does it go? Obviously, I would love it to go as far as like running and have an expert even in the industry. Or even like, for example, yoga, dance, something like that. You know, someone who's got the expertise in that. That's uh, a completely different business though, isn't it? Yeah. Like, and even yeah. if you were to try and get an athlete from the running sector, the prices of getting a really good influencer to be the face of your brand versus oh, getting a, a top figure skater are probably incomparable. Oh, 100%, right? I agree. Yeah, 100%. Same with yeah. yoga. I think you're probably going to be synonymous with figure skating. And I think for you, that's going to be great. However, I'm not overly convinced that that will be a great opportunity for me also as an investor. Yeah. And it's for that reason that I'm going to say that I'm out. A setback for Jenna, who has lost her first dragon. Will Tuka Suleiman find rail space for rinkware in his sizeable fashion portfolio? I think you've done a brilliant, brilliant job okay. taking it so far. Yeah. But when I looked at the product, with my 48 years of experience, yes. um, I was a bit surprised that it was all polyester. I think that if you want to enter a market like the US, yep. and you want to stay there long term, mm -hmm. you've got to improve the quality of the fabrics. And that based a lot around nylon, because it fits better and it, it looks more expensive. If you want to build that brand in that category, I would focus on getting your product right yep. before you enter new markets. Yep. So for that reason, you know, I wish you all the best and I'm out. Thank you. Jenna. I appreciate it and thank you for your advice. So everything you've done and where you are looking to go from a business perspective, you are so investable as an individual, there's no doubt. However, if you want to have an opportunity to grow this business and take it forward, yep you must do more research in your knowledge and awareness of the okay. market yeah. and your competitors in that market. And I think you've come in without that information is a, is a really big mistake. So for that reason, I'm out. Jenna, are you proud of what you've achieved? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Do you know what you really should be? And, you know, I'm looking at your business here and I think you've built some really good solid foundations. All the growth you've achieved, you've done organically. You certainly don't need to give away some of your business. 
don't do it. You don't need to do it. So it's in thinking of that mind frame that I'm not going to make you an offer today, okay. and I'm going to say that I'm out. Thank you. Four dragons down, and only Deborah Meaden remains. She's praised the former Olympian's winning mentality, but is she poised to provide a podium finish to her pitch? So, first of all, I would congratulate you. Some people are instinctive business people. I think that's you, because you haven't come from a business background, you've spotted an opportunity, you've got a really lovely-looking, very focused brand that has still got elasticity. You know, you've still got two big markets. You know how to get to those markets. You know exactly what you need to do. And leave me here, sitting, thinking, what can I do for Jenna? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, you're stumped yourself. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of... It's not often I'm delighted when somebody doesn't get an investment. But I completely agree with Sarah. I think you might look back on this moment and think, do you know what? No, I, I really appreciate, it like, all of your support and your advice. So I'm very sorry, Jenna. I'm out. OK. I appreciate Good it, and thank you so much for well done. all your advice. Jenna, well, well done. Good to meet you. Thank you. Good thank you. Jenna might not be departing with a dragon's cash, but unusually, given her failure to clinch a deal, there's no shortage of positives for the sportswear entrepreneur to take away from the den. I loved her. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful entrepreneur. I feel like they all believed in me and they've all gave me the advice and give me the self-confidence to go ahead now and take the company to where I know it can go.